All right, Matthew. Yeah. Matthew, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, Hayward, California is where I grew up for the first 12 years of my life. And then um, my parents moved to, uh, us to Castro Valley, California because we were in somewhat of the ghetto and um, wanted to go to a, a better neighborhood. And so, um, yeah, I mean, growing up in the, the ghetto, uh, I guess as the white boy, um, there were, you know, it wasn't anything too bad. I mean, I guess like once I got a knife pulled on me a, on a corner when I was like nine years old, I think I saw, a, 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 well, I know I did, I don't think. I saw a condom full of jizz hanging from a tree when I was like 10, and that was like probably the first time I saw anything like that. But, you know, it was just like there was gangs and stuff. Like a, a, f a friend of my cousin got shot like a couple blocks down. Uh, and so around that time, a couple years later, is when we moved to Castro Valley. And that was somewhat better. But when I got there, it was more like... Um, I came from where I came from and then I entered a more whitewashed area and then it was like instead of being the white boy I was the the white boy that f didn't fit in because I didn't have the money like or the new items like everybody had or clothes or you know electronics or whatever and so um, I remember uh, just uh, being a teenager and, and getting older I liked playing basketball but I was never good enough to be on the team and um, it's just kind of an outcast trying to find myself and in, uh, in high school as a teenager I got more into music and stuff and I got into metal and punk and everything and uh, I, I guess I, one, one year I remember uh, it was summer school I remember uh, uh, there was a kid named Ben that he wore like Converse high, t you know, high top Chuck Taylors and he listened to Blink-182, and I like Blink-182, which I'm not by any means saying that they're punk, but, you know, when you're 15 years old, that's, uh, so yeah, I was listening to stuff like that, and um, uh, I started getting more into that, and I started wearing Ch Chuck Taylors and stuff, and I remember the next year, Ben's like, oh, you're a poser, and, you know, all of a sudden, it's like you're finding yourself and trying to be an individual, and you're a poser, so, yeah, so um, high school was was cool, and, I mean, it was there were some, you know, fights with, you know, kids that wanted to pick fights and stuff. It, it was. So sounds like a pretty normal childhood. It was. It was. <laughs> I mean, I have some stories. Except, was, except for except for the being an outcast everywhere you went. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Um, no, but I, I definitely have some stories. Um, when I was about 11 years old, um, there was a fall festival in Castro Valley. And this is when we still lived in Hayward, but uh, my parents wanted to go. It was kind of like your wine and uh, arts and crafts festival. So we go there and I'm being, you know, uh, I want to go home. I'm bored. I'm bored. And my parents are having a good time. They're drinking. They're drinking wine. They're having a good time. And we're watching, you know, some cover bands, some dad cover band. And um, uh, they are getting progressively drunker and, you know, not to the point where they're sloppy or, or crazy, but they're just having a good time. And as a child, as a almost a teenager, you know, I'm uh, getting embarrassed, which who gives a shit, you know, like who cares what they're doing and what I'm doing, like, but as an 11 year old being in that, I, I have the sense that everybody's watching us and that all these people, like I'm going to see any of them for the rest of my life, you know, at this age, I wouldn't give a shit, like I've gone to shows and danced my ass off, you know, I've been on acid, I've been on mushrooms like that shows, like I don't care, but anyway, so I knock the wine glass out of my dad's hand. I slap it. This little brat, this stupid little jerk. <laughs> and that was it. My dad instantly went from party and happy, which they didn't drink a lot. They, you know, didn't have any problems like that. My dad does have anger issues. Um, never beat me or anything. You know, I got spanked as a kid and he definitely did a lot of yelling. Um, but, you know, we can go in more into that later. But, um, in this situation, it, it was instant change. The look on his face, he was, I, I knew I, f I fucked up big time. And my mom, it was like a scared look on her face. He said that, he said, get in the car, let's go. And we got in the car and he drove home probably, and I'm talking down residential streets. This dude was, I mean, I have a very vivid memory and to have this memory, as an 11 year old and remember looking at the, you know, miles per hour, it was 50 or 60 miles per hour down residentials the whole way. And I was scared out of my, eh, whatever, I was scared. And so we got home, 
he's just screaming at me, you know, like I'm, uh, I fucked up and I did. I totally understand. I mean, I don't know if I, I mean, I would hope that if I had a child and I was drinking, I would have the capacity not to, you know, do something like that. But who knows? Um, so he's yelling and screaming at, at that point. My mom, she's, they're drunk. And so she passes out on the bed. Well, then my dad starts yelling at her because she's passed out drunk in front of her son and that's not what you're supposed to do and all this stuff. And I'm freaking out like I'm scared. And so I run in the bathroom. I remember he like slammed the door open and put like a hole in the wall. And at that point, I I was so scared that I ran out of the house. I ran to the neighbors and I said, call the cops. My dad's drunk. He's freaking out. (sighs) They (laughs) called the cops. And my parents had to go to Santa Rita jail for the weekend, both of them, because you know how cops are sometimes. They, it's not very rational. It's then plus when you have two really drunk people, they don't really trust them or believe them, and so, yeah. And uh, I felt really bad, and so, so a little drama in your childhood. A little bit, and I mean, I have always, I've never been good enough for my dad. It's always. There's, uh, I, I just, I can't do it. I, there's things in life that like, I worked at a print shop and there was like, he wanted me to install like lighting and all these things. And I'm like, well, I've never used uh, a electric drill or whatever the hell it's called. I've never used one of these before. And he's like, mine's blown. Then I'm like, I'm 35 now that I was like this 33 year old man that didn't have these skills, which I mean, whatever, people learn their own skills. And, but you know, the stereotype. And he was Mr. Manly Man. He was a stripper in his 20s, like big buff dude. And that's a whole, that's whole other thing. But um, uh, so, yeah, I didn't learn certain things. And because my dad would always say, like, I'll do it. Like, you, I, I don't want you to screw it up, basically. He wouldn't say that, you know, to my face. But, yeah, so there were different things like that. Um, I, I would get in trouble at school, but nothing. You know, it was like stupid shit. Like one time, like I pretended to stab a kid with a pencil and, that you know I like went like that and that turned into oh he was gonna stab me and I got suspended or you know uh, telling that told the teacher one time you're not my mom I don't have to listen to you shit like that like I wasn't you know going and bringing a gun to school or graffitiing all over the walls or smoking pot in the bathroom you know so how how far did you go to school uh I I did a little bit of college I only did one semester of college Mm -hmm. um and 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 you you've had jobs you have a job now mm mm-hmm yep yeah, I've uh, done a, I've done a lot. Uh, I did. I was like okay in high school, like 3.0 or whatever grade point average. In college, I was trying to major in mass communications because I knew people at a local radio station that had referred me to this school and to this teacher. I I guess I'm kind of one of those people that I have underperformed or had ruined my potential. So so you're working currently. You have a straight job. I do, I do a gig through an app right now. I was working at a restaurant in December and then they closed down indoor dining, which was fine because we had outdoor dining, yeah. but then they closed that down. And then it was like I was doing double the work because of delivery, you know, packing bags and all that shit. And then getting paid like, I mean, not half, but half in tips because people don't tip uh, the restaurant for delivery, they tip the driver. And so, not that that's wrong, I don't really care. I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't like, oh, damn it, the economy's fucked. I'm gonna take a stand or something. I'm like, okay, time to move on to something else. And so, I found this app um, through Craigslist that does gigs and you just pick a shift and you pick time and how much you get paid and you sign up. And so, I started working at this warehouse and uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, over time, I've took on more responsibility, and they've made me like shift lead and stuff. And um, it's 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 all right. It's not. But, but you you you'd, con- you'd consider yourself a good employee. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. It's frustrating because like most of these people, ninety percent of these people could give a shit. But that's what is the problem with these gig apps. I mean, there's multiple problems, but that you're hiring people that don't care at all they have no they they could give a shit if they work hard or not and these people that are managing it they don't care either as long as the job's getting done they don't care how it gets done so uh in terms of recognition only i mean i have a few close people i talk to and we all know that we're great 
and I mean, I guess that sounds conceited, but we, I mean, it's just the fact. Uh, and so we talk and hang out and we compliment each other, but there is only one person that has come up to me and said out of their way, you know, like anything. And it wasn't a manager. Um, it was a guy that does boxes in the back that I am 99% sure is doing blow in the bathroom every day. This dude flushes the toilet every 10 seconds and then is farting his ass off. Like, I've done coke. Like, I know the deal, bro. Like, you don't need to flush the toilet. Like, I, you can, I can hear you snorting it and I'm not going to tell on you. Like, uh, but... Yeah, he, he, he said that and that made me feel really good. And I was like, I was like, wow, that's amazing. That person like thought to say that. And he's actually a really intelligent guy. I've heard him talking. He's, he's from the streets in Oakland and he's a tough dude or so he seems he puts on the front. But uh, yeah, I like him. He's cool. So, so, so you're, you're drug. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. You, you, oh, yeah. You use what? So I, I use heroin. I, I smoke heroin. And how, uh, long, how long has this been going on? Uh, so I started with oxycodone, Roxy's, Blues, 30s, um, in 2012, a little bit. I was dabbling with that a little bit in tar, black tar heroin. Uh, I was working doing vending machines. I had that job for seven years. You were smoking it? Mm-hmm. Always, always. I, after doing coke for a couple of years, I was sick of putting stuff up my nose and I'm afraid of needles. And I see, I've seen what happens with that, which not saying that, oh, me smoking heroin is so much better than injecting it, but it just seems, uh, you know, but then again, I mean, I smoke cigarettes. I smoked that. I was smoking a ton of weed, which I barely smoke anymore, but I mean, it definitely affects my breathing and affects my lungs. And that's something I'm worried about and that I Want, would like to quit eventually. I mean, I actually was on methadone recently, but um, my work schedule made it to where I couldn't get to the clinic anymore because for the first three months, you have to go to the clinic every day. That's part of the process. And I was doing fine. It, um, methadone's a little odd. It's kind of, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like if I could choose and if heroin was legal and didn't give me breathing problems to smoke, I would choose heroin any day over methadone. But because methadone is socially accepted in the world and you're not smoking it and ruining your lungs, it's obviously the better choice and it's cheaper. It's easier on the pocketbook. Um, and so, uh, sorry, back to the, the Roxy's. Uh, this is it was actually 2013. It was shortly after I quit the music thing. The Vincent Gallo show, I quit after that. I was done. I was like, I'm the guy putting up all the money, all the time, all the effort. Everybody's saying, great job, man. Keep it up. But they're not the ones doing all that. So I said, fuck it. I'm not doing this shit anymore. And shortly after that, I had a best friend named Tiffany that would come pick me up after work. We would drink. We'd do coke. We'd hang out all the time. And one day she comes to pick me up and, hey, blah, 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 I'm dating this guy. And he showed me these pills and uh, Oxycontin, basically. This is back when the 80s, the OC 80s were still around. And uh, for all the people out there that know, the ones you have to lick the coating off, and then, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so she showed up and, and I, at that point in my life, was, I was 27 and I was just like sick of everything. and was like, might as well join the 27 Club, right? Um, which if you don't know, Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, all those people um, that died of like, you know, drug related uh, deaths. Anyway, I didn't really want to die, but I was just giving up. And so I was like, fuck it, I don't care, sure, let's do it. And <laughs> that was the biggest mistake of my life because I fucking loved it. And everybody says, don't do opiates, don't do heroin. It's, you're never going to come back from it. And of course, I didn't listen. I have to try everything on my own. Uh, and I mean, you know, my life isn't like Requiem for a Dream now. Like I'm not going and doing ass to ass for money, you know. But um, I, uh, uh, yeah, I just, I loved it. And it, and it, people say, some people say this, other people just get the nods and they're kind of like, uh, you know, but it makes me like fucking boom. I'm me, I'm myself, I'm happy, I'm free, I'm energetic. Like, it's crazy. It, become, it became what I wanted it to be and it became what I needed it to be. And that's crazy because it's like, it's like it took my, it, it's a fucking crazy drug. It's like it took my brain over and it just said like, this is what you needed and like, this is the way it should be. And so there, uh, 
like there have been multiple times that I've tried to quit on my own. There's been periods of three months where I've been able to quit. Um, when I moved to Arkansas, I was able to quit for three months, especially I thought, well, shit, I'm going to Arkansas. I'm not going to know anybody out there. So there's no way I'm going to, you know, know about it. So um, your, your drug use has continued. You're, 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 still, yeah. you're still using heroin today. Right, because, yeah, I couldn't make the methadone treatments anymore. And so um, I, I didn't want to get sick and experience the withdrawals. I've, I tried to quit cold turkey back in September a few months ago. But I got to day two or three, day two the first time, and I broke down and said, fuck it, I had some straws with resin, you know, shake those up with some alcohol and put that on the foil and you got, you're good. Um, but does, does it affect your work? No, no, nobody has any idea. Nobody, no, <laughs> I'm, it, it makes it me better at work. It, it almost sounds like it makes you, like it makes you better. It makes me better I've at heard work. people tell me this about crack cocaine, that mm. these are ADHD people right like maybe i have that people have said that too and i don't know i've yeah. never been I, diagnosed I've, i've had people tell me the crack does the opposite what it t does to most people hmm it just makes them like fine or it makes them slow it slows them down calms them uh, down calms them down because they're usually they can't yeah focus huh so yeah i mean i think these drugs affect everyone differently right right yeah no i mean it Unless I start getting crazy and doing too much, then it can it can kind of has that happened? Do it. Yeah, because there was a time where I was just like depressed and like didn't care and everything, and so I was just like fuck it and spending all my money. But now I've learned that that's not worth it because then I get in too deep and that the money is going to run out, and so I just pace myself and try not to do too much and. You know, uh, it sucks when I'm home alone sometimes and I'm just bored because then I'll just like take hits but, just but because I'm bored. You would, you would consider yourself an addict? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every day. I do heroin every day. All day, every day. <laughs> you wake up and... I wake up and smoke. Uh, I hop out of bed. It's like, I feel like I'm going to some huge event like the freaking Outside Lands Festival is happening today and I get to meet all the bands just because I get to smoke. Like, it's crazy. Like... <laughs> but you find it, it it prepares you for your day. It makes yeah, you it makes, makes you me sharp. happy. It makes me I'm energetic because I get out of bed. I'm like, oh, damn, I need to. And you know what? You know what? This sucks. And this is making me very worried. Besides the breathing thing is recently I've been waking up and my hand is like numb. And like I also it might be carpal tunnel because of what I'm doing at work. So I'm trying to do exercises. But I mean, shit, I don't know if it's it has to do with the drugs, you know, that, that scares me. So. And then I'm like, fuck, I can't use a lighter. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that really sucks. But yeah. I, have, I, have, you, have you met other people that are functional addicts like this? Uh, kind of, but not like, I mean, the people, the, the, I, there were like people, especially like when I was doing Oxy, that was more of a, uh, so with Oxy, sometimes, because Oxy was expensive, it would get like $30, $35 a pill sometimes. And Heroin's way cheaper, and that's why I started doing it, because it gets you higher and it's cheaper. Um, and so, Oxy, um, I would post, this is back, Craigslist made it to where you can't post certain keywords now. But, back in the day, you used to be able to post Roxy Blue Jeans, size 30, and then that's how, you know, I would find dealers sometimes, actually. Um, and, I mean walking around the tenderloin like walking pill hill i mean i used to have to do it sometimes and it sucked i mean one time a guy tried to uppercut me it was fucked up just because i wouldn't buy his pills his shitty fucking fake pills like sorry dude luckily you missed i mean i don't know what would have happened but um not that i'm some tough guy i'm not trying to sound like i would have beat his ass you know i'm not like that but i mean i might have tried to <laughs> but um anyway I would meet people on Craigslist because I would I started to realize and other people would do this. I picked it up like if you sell the pills to somebody else and mark them up or a common thing I would say if I knew they weren't going to buy that many is I'd say, all right, just throw me a pill or throw me a half. Like that's when you're really desperate. You'd say, throw me a half a pill and then they would. And, you know, one time I did that and this girl, we were smoking in a bathroom and she fucking got on the floor and started smoothing the foil out on the floor of a dirty jack-in-the-box bathroom. And I was like, I'm on the wall doing it, you know? The wall's smooth, too. And she, I was like, what are you doing? And she was a little, whoop, 
you know, and she, I, I, she's like, what? I'm, I'm fucking, you know, f- f- smoothing it out. I was like, dude, on the wall, the bathroom floor is dirty. And she's, she didn't care. So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I'd meet, I'd meet functional addicts uh, somewhat, somewhat. Mm-hmm. They were definitely eccentric. They definitely had their things and they weren't reliable. You know, it's, it's not, it sounds like you're, you're a case where maybe the, your psychological makeup is. Yeah. But nobody's going to listen to that. You, you will, because you understand, because you've talked to so many people and you pay attention and you care. There are people out there that have no concept of this and don't want to hear it. Because that's the way the world yeah, is. Yeah, well, I'm open-minded, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never smoked pot, so I don't, I don't know anything about drugs. The fact ah. that I'm doing this channel that nice. seems to revolve Good for around you, man. drugs, it really doesn't <laughs> in my mind, but, but certainly yeah. there's lots of drug stories. I don't even know how to spell marijuana. <laughs> so. So, so I, I'm just open-minded. I, I find it interesting that, that it helps you. Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, I find I it interesting that you've never even smoked marijuana. I mean, not that I'm saying like, oh, you should or you should have, but yeah, they need the channel. You know, it's, yeah, well, I'm not better than anybody else. I'm no, just, I'm just, yeah, right. Neither I, I've am got I. my own problems. Yeah. In there. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm better than any other addict. You know, like we all have our own things, and we're all we're all unique. We're, I mean, everybody. It it's, makes the world the world, and sometimes it's the beauty of the world that's the fucked up things. I, I think finding something that helps you find fulfillment and happiness mm-hmm. is important. <laughs> and and if that happens to be heroin, and you're and you've got it under control, maybe maybe it's okay. I don't. know. I do, but then it's the money thing. You know, it's how it's, much do you spend? It's a lot of money. I mean, what do you spend a week or? A month, probably fifteen hundred dollars. So I could have a nice apartment. Fifteen hundred a month. Fifteen hundred, yeah. Because I, I imagine I probably do. Um, and it's illegal. Five, five, five hundred a day. Eh, nope, fifty a day. It's um, a, it's illegal. So technically, you illegal, you yeah, could end up so. in jail, right? Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that sucks. Um, but talking to you, looking at you, you don't look like the typical heroin addict that I've interviewed. And that's why I'm still probably here <laughs> and functioning and not on the streets, you know. Yeah. Because if, if it started to affect me, I mean, I don't know. If I started smoking crack, I probably would. I know. I, buddy, I can't count how many heroin addicts I've talked to that just nodded off in the middle of an interview. Right. They probably also shoot up. Well, I guess people now, I've known people that nod off that smoke it. Never mind. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's, it's never happened except one time. The worst story is I was drunk and I went to my dealer's RV, a guy that was living in an RV, and I, he, he had terrible shit. It wasn't doing anything for me and I was pissed. And because I'd have to travel like an hour and a half to this guy. Um, and I was at that point, this stupid, very stupid, I said, you gotta have something. And he goes, yeah, I have fentanyl. And me knowing exactly what that is and what could happen and everything was drunk and said, fuck it, I don't care, line me up some or whatever. I don't know how long later I wake up and I am like, where the fuck am I? What, what happened? You know? And everybody is around me scared out of their mind. And I fucking OD'd, man. I fucking OD'd for the first time ever. And that, that really, that really upset me because I didn't ever think I'd get to that point. But, um, uh, yeah, they had to hit me with Narcan like five times, they said. And like, Every, they said I was turning gray and like, like my, like only, only my girlfriend knows about this. Like nobody else knows about, I mean, this is the people that were there, but whew, man, I really tried to quit after that, man. I got through like a week (laughs) and I was happy, but I was happy that I quit. I was fucking bored out of my mind, you know, but yeah, that was, fentanyl's no good. Don't do it. <laughs> Everybody out there, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, fentanyl's a very different game than, than heroin. That's a fucking crazy game to play, man. That's, uh, yeah. It's a very common move for a heroin yeah. addict to and switch I, over I do fentanyl. not want to do that at all. And I know, and I know there is some fentanyl in the black tar heroin. So that's because, what I was going to say, is that you know, very right. often they're lacing it and they're mixing it. Luckily, I have, you know... Even, or, even, even crystal meth or, or mm-hmm. crack, they'll do that with. Yeah. Luckily, I have a... I mean, they a can ride. do it to anything. I think some of the, the girls that work as that have pimps uh-huh. will smoke a joint and the joint might be laced with oh my God. You know, crack or meth or heroin or fentanyl or whatever and then they're addicted and then they're they're basically God. a slave to the pimp. 
Yeah, I knew. I, I heard a story about a guy once that smoked a joint with some random dude. He was lost in the middle of the night in the snow in Chicago, couldn't find his car, and some dude says, "Bro, I've seen you walk by a few times. Come in, you know, you could stay." And he seemed like a cool guy. He's like, "You want to smoke a joint?" The guy's like, "Oh yeah, dude, I smoke weed. Let's smoke." Fucking smokes that it was laced with meth. Dude starts jerking off in front of him and fucking holds him captive overnight. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm lucky, you, you know, the, I'm the, lucky. The, the world you're involved in by using yeah. this, this illicit yeah. narcotic is yeah. problematic, no. right? Totally, and I like I, I was saying, I, I have a reliable dealer that I trust, um, but that doesn't mean anything, you know? He could get something that he doesn't know about, yeah. you know? But, I mean, at this point, I'm really just trying to make it through until I get the next job, which should happen in a couple weeks, and... Uh, then I get a set schedule and I can get back to the methadone clinic because I know, you know, can, I'm a I smart... Mean, so so you, you say your, your, your mind works better on heroin. Mm -hmm. Could you ever get clean and, and, and still enjoy life to its fullest? I mean, I did before. You did. You okay. know, it's That's not great. like... It's not like before... It's probably a safer Before way to I go. started, I wasn't enjoying life. I was just depressed in that moment and I made a bad decision. Yeah. You know? Um, well, it, so it sounds like getting clean would be the best move. Oh, totally, yeah. And I, I want to. I, I And I didn't even want to do methadone because I said I don't want to replace an addiction with an addiction. And my buddy's on methadone, and he tried to stop one day, and he said it was way worse than heroin. So I know there's maintenance plans where they can wean you off slowly but surely, and I'm hoping that's what's going to work. If not, I, I've said this to people I'm close to, and my girlfriend, like, I think I just need to be locked up somewhere, you know? Like, yeah. For 30 days because I I am resourceful I'm it sucks I don't like lying uh, and I I know that probably sounds like bullshit I really don't but as an addict with the world the way it is and people you know would look at me a certain way I have to lie because I I need to get by and just yeah I was living with my girlfriend's mom and her for a couple of weeks, and her mom had me pegged from probably day two. She told her he's on drugs, and I was with my girlfriend for almost a year. How could she and, tell? Uh, she's smart. She her her ex husband was an addict. She knew. She's uh, she she uh, and also is making you know longer trips to the bathroom quite often. You know, uh, and I'd always like play YouTube videos. I watch Soft White Underbelly. You know, in the bathroom all. <laughs> Everybody that watches that's, that's they're like, what are you attic. doing in there? I'm, I'm watching the hillbilly. Sh shut up. They're, <laughs> you know? they're all a bunch of drug addicts watching that channel. Yeah. So, yep. Cool. Well, that's, your story is amazing it, and right? interesting. I wish you the best of luck. And thank uh, you, man. I like I your open-minded attitude about yeah. Yeah. Thanks getting clean. For the opportunity about getting clean, not about using heroin. I right. No. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't condone the heroin use at all. Right. No. I'm not. I don't think so. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you. Yeah. And I wish you the best of luck, man. Right on. Thank Thanks, you, Mark. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah.